everyone's starting churn before working with us is like anywhere between 15.8 to like 16.9. So like that's the range on average. So that we can fix. Do you all do the five horsemen of retention? Are you familiar with those? Kind of, though. Okay, let's go back over. This is really important for everybody. When you implement it is really important too because it needs to be implemented in a way. Once you get all these rocking and rolling, let me first show you what happens as the result, get the buy-in, and then I'll show you how to do it. Five horsemen of retention. I wish I could draw a horse. <laughs> please, <laughs> please try. Please, yeah, please, please try. try. <laughs> Come on. Give it a shot. I'm a visual person. I won't it. be like, no, I'll draw a stick. <laughs> I'm not even gonna do it. All right, so here's the rule of thumb of what happens. So month one, when when you start implementing all, all of them, so it's all five, so just as a heads up. If you're gonna just go all five, you're gonna go up, your churn is gonna increase by 50%. So then everyone is like, oh my gosh, this doesn't work. But I'll show you why this happens in just a second. So churn goes up by 50%. In month two, it drops by 50%. Example, you average 16% churn. That means it will go to 24% churn because we increased by 50%. Month one of implementing this. Reason why is you shake the tree because we're gonna start reaching out to people, handwritten cards, all this stuff. Then month two, it drops by 50%. So now it drops to 12%. Then month three, it drops by 50% again. And typically it stabilizes around here, but you can also keep trying to drop it, but it doesn't drop again by that percentage, unless you're just insane. So that means it would go from 12 to six. And that's how it works. Now, what are they? One, track attendance. Track attendance, and with that, we do that because we do the weekly reach outs that we talked about earlier. So by Thursday, we pull a report of everyone that has not shown up that is a paying client, and we reach out to them, and we get them back in by Thursday or Friday of that week. So we pick up the phone, we call them, cool? So that's track attendance and reach outs. Number two is weekly texts two to three times a week. This is for all members. This is a save situation to re-engage and get people to come in and consume your service. This is just, hey, I care about you. I'm just checking in. How we doing? How you feeling? You sore? Whatever. So this one's really important. Super important. This goes to all members. Okay. Number three, handwritten cards. One time a month. Handwritten cards one time a month. Best way to do it, split your entire roster into however many groups you have of trainers. And so if you have four trainers, take 150 people, split them up into four groups, and then just rotate the trainer among the groups. So keep the group the same. So month one, trainer writes a card to this group. Month two, they rotate to the next group, write handwritten card. So they hit everybody. Who doesn't love a handwritten card? Are y'all doing this? Uh, we do for different reasons. Yes, we do the track attendance. We do the weekly text. We do the handwritten cards, but not the way you, not the way you described it. You just say it once a month. Do you do one once a month? Um, well, it's usually for something. It a special month. event. Yeah, it's yeah. not just because. Do you track attention? Just track attendance, but there's no report pulled, no reach out. No, there. We do that. We run a report to see. I remember like the red, green. Yep. And the, Heck yeah. yeah. So we, so we do that. Okay. Sweet. We're gonna talk about that then. Just a second. Okay. This would be good. This is great. And then number four is you're gonna do member events. These should be anywhere between every four to six weeks. And then number five, exit interviews. Everyone. That is how you cut down on churn. Everyone has to do an exit interview. I don't think we talked about it on the last IC Live, but a little trick to ensure you get exit interviews is you get everyone on ACH. If you want to cut down on churn, it's really easy to cancel a credit card. Is it not? Best way to not. It's also lower processing fees for you guys. ACH. ACH. Takes a, it's a lot harder to cancel that, which mm -hmm. means you now have the opportunity to do an exit interview. The reason why exit interviews are really hard on a credit card is they just ghost you and they just stop, right? So if you switch to ACH, bam, done. If you wanted to get really crazy, raise your prices just a little bit and then give them a discount. <laughs> Bring it right back down for using ACH and then just discount everybody or just say, this is all we accept, this is how we do it. Put a card as a backup. ACH is first, card as a backup. Okay, let's talk about real quick. So you're saying you're tracking attendance, right? You're doing the reach outs every week. Every week. Cool, in both locations? Not in Northland, it's inconsistent. Okay, uh, weekly texts are going out? Yes. Two to three times per week? Yes. To every uh, member? To Nashville. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. It is for, if someone is in some kind of guided program, a challenge of, of some, mm -hmm. Some kind. Got it. Yeah, this should be in all clients. No, outside. Yeah, no. all clients. Is that Henry, related, Kale? Like, are you that's all in trainerized, by the way. Right. <laughs> Would you pre-program for the for the all member ones for this? Because yeah. we only we're the same as you. We only do it for like challengers or like. There's a 52 week. We built it. There's a 52 week program in trainerized. So we automate that. Part. Yep. And we just reply obviously. Yeah. Just that. reply. Okay. Yeah. We'll end up building some really cool stuff for you guys. Handwritten cards are happening one time a month in both locations. No? Okay. Member events. We're doing those every four to six weeks. Okay, cool. And then we got exit interviews. Are these happening? Yeah. Okay. 
because they're probably just ghosting and dipping. Okay, so if you switch to ACH, that will diminish greatly. And then you have the opportunity to save them. You find out exactly what's wrong. Like, why are we leaving? What have we not fulfilled on? And then you're like, can I get 30 days or 14 days or whatever to fix this? Cool, let's do it. Super simple, super simple conversation, right? And if they still wanna leave and you've gone through this whole thing, cool, let them go. But like, sit down, have the conversation, keep notes, ask the same questions. I think we have an exit interview sheet. Then you can start tracking why are people leaving. Back to this, your churn is showing that it's, Number one, it's not getting any better. My bet is that it's execution. It's a little bit better. Like you went 10, 13, yeah, seven, but it's kind of all over the place and you got turn expired eight. So that spiked. What this is showing me is that the execution of the plan is not actually happening to the level that it should. Would that be a reasonable assumption? Yeah. Cool. The strategy is correct. The execution of it sucks. When was the last time you checked the messages that are being sent out and checked what they were doing? I look at that every day. Okay. And I'm looking at the messages and yep. seeing the members you know, responding with whatever's going on. Okay. While they're not in. Okay. There, I mean, it's, there's, I guess there's no coaching behind it. It's just, okay, you're, you're not here. Oh, we miss you. We'll hope to see you soon. Maybe we can try to pre-book some people for class. Yeah. It's all reactive. It's, it's not, rea it's not is reaching it reactive out. or proactive? It's probably more reactive. Yep. That's the point of this piece and like this piece is try to be as proactive as possible to insert yourself into their life to where it becomes a lifestyle piece rather than just a, eh, I can dip. And that's why the member events are really big. So if people miss a member event, you should reach out to them. There's something wrong. Like we on vacation, we gone. Like we just had an event, we missed you. Really would have loved to see you there. It was incredible. XYZ jumped off the roof. Like it was insane. Something like that, this is where these are really big. Every opportunity you have to be able to do this is massive. Other reason for member events, if you guys ever hold member events, please do this. Don't ever skip this result. You guys watch me walk down this and I literally helped sell more people on tickets and we crushed, we beat our goal of selling tickets in the first 24 hours. You can use that every member event. You should grab testimonials, every single one, grab testimonial, take a camera out, grab testimonials, get them right there, post them live, post them as organic, save them, whatever. You get incredible testimonials every time you do a client event. Everyone's in one spot. Everyone's stoked, especially if you have alcohol and you give them a couple drinks, it's even better, a little wine. Everyone's like feeling the buzz. They're feeling great. All that stuff. Trust me, it works. It's exceptional. I'm not saying you have to serve alcohol or anything like that, but if it does happen, it will. I know Kale kind of touched on it, but like having the events gives you the ongoing and forever reason to reach out where it doesn't feel like you're yes. bugging someone. Like it, it really is important. Those two things to go together. Like, Hey, you know, I haven't seen you in a minute, but next Friday we're doing this thing. Like, or, you know, here's some pictures from last Friday's event, like before and after that one event provides a couple weeks of communication. Yeah. Cause I know it's kind of weird. Like if you have nothing to talk about, Right? It's like, hey, how are you? You should have one fully funded by you event per year and it should be your biggest event of the year where you just shower, the rest of it should be shared or it's just doing lives together. Potlucks, whatever, or doing life where they pay for their ticket to go, but it's community based. But you should do one per year where it's a blowout and you cover it. All right, sweet, everybody got this? So we need to go double check how this is all happening. And is it happening to the level and with the care and empathy that's required to make this successful? Is just this is the one that's the hardest and this is why churn is people get so frustrated with it and a lot of people end up that are really good at sales just rather focus on outselling their churn mm -hmm. but they never can catch up because this requires actually truly caring about people to a deeper level of just being relentless i do care about people i know you do that's why you I can do. crush this yeah, that's why you can crush this. Absolutely. I said it earlier, right? I know you do. I can tell you do. But this is where sometimes it can get a little bit harder because it's the execution, the tonality of it. Like you could send out a survey to people that haven't been in a while and just be like, hey, real quick, we were talking about this in class. What do you think about what's the difference between X, Y, and Z? Or if you could choose between this and this, which would you do? Right? Like we just did an icebreaker last night, which I thought was freaking hilarious. We were sitting at dinner and I think Trevor brought it up or whatever. He's like, what's one conspiracy theory that you firmly believe in? Like what's the one conspiracy theory that you believe is absolutely true, right? Trevor, share your <laughs> Arctic wall, baby. Arctic wall. It's a whole nother world behind it. <laughs> we won't go down that, that rabbit hole.